Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Shannon and I'm a pet portrait and wildlife artist specialising in realistic coloured pencil drawings. In this video, I'm going to go over everything that you need to know about coloured pencils so that you can feel more confident with getting started. I'll talk you through the supplies that you'll need along with a few of my favourite techniques for creating highly detailed realistic drawings. As I spend a lot of my time drawing animals and elements of their environment, a lot of my techniques are going to be more catered towards natural subjects, but don't worry, I'll try and cover all bases so that you have enough information no matter what you're interested in drawing. So without further ado, let's delve into the wonderful medium of coloured pencils. There are so many different coloured pencil brands on the market offering it different types of pencils and different set sizes. So this can make it feel really overwhelming for beginners as there are so many different options to pick from and coloured pencils aren't the cheapest medium either. So choosing a coloured pencil set can feel like a huge deal as you don't want to waste money on a set that doesn't work for you. I've tried quite a few different brands myself, but my favourite and most used coloured pencils are the Faber-Castell Polychromos. I personally love the Polychromos as they're an oil-based pencil with hard leads, which means they're perfect for getting a super sharp point and squeezing in lots of detail in my pet portraits. They blend really nicely and have a good colour range, however I do have to use a few extra brands to fill in the gaps which I will go into later. Despite the fact that they blend nicely, I wouldn't recommend layering a lighter polychromos pencil over a darker one, as it won't work too well. Instead, they're best used for layering from light to dark. Another benefit of polychromos is that they have a high light fast rating, which essentially means your drawing will stand the test of time and it's not going to fade over the years. This is particularly important for professional artists like myself, who charge money for the artwork, as you want to ensure that the drawing won't deteriorate as it's been displayed on your client's wall. Unfortunately, with good quality comes a hefty price tag and polychromos aren't the cheapest of coloured pencils. On average, a full set of 120 pencils could cost you anywhere between £160 and £240 at the time of this video. Thankfully, they also sell these pencils individually, which is how I prefer to purchase them myself now. And on average, they cost about £1.50 to £1.90, depending on where you get them from. And if you've got a specific drawing in mind, it might be worth trying out a small handful of individual pencils and then building your collection up that way. My next favourite make of coloured pencil are the Caran d'Ache Luminance pencils. They're very different to the Polychromos as they're a wax based pencil which means they're really soft and creamy and super easy to blend, even more so than the Polychromos and they're really vibrant and pigmented. Due to the creamier texture it's easier to layer lighter colours on top of dark colours and this technique is often referred to as burnishing which we'll go more into later on in this video. As they are so waxy, I do find that the luminance pencils don't hold the point as well and need sharpening more frequently. This does make it a bit trickier for drawing detailed areas and also means that the leads are used up quicker and so they do need to be repurchased more often. The main reason that I like these pencils is because they have some really beautiful shades in the range that you can't really achieve just using the polychromos alone. I can't speak for the full range because I've only got a small collection but I think I probably will try and add some more in and maybe even treat myself to a full set at some point. Just to list off some of my favourite shades, I always use Buff Titanium, love that one, Sepia 10%, Brown Ochre 10%, Brown Ochre 50%, Burn Ochre 50%, Raw Umber 10% and Steel Grey. I really like those colours and I find myself reaching for them quite a lot. I know a lot of artists favour the luminance pencils for drawing human portraits, so that's also worth considering if that's the kind of work that you're into. And these pencils are also light fast with resistance to UV, so they're safe for professional use and they will withstand the equivalent of 100 years under museum lighting. <laughs> The Caran d'Ache Luminance pencils aren't the cheapest, unfortunately, with a full set of 100 shades setting you back around £250 to £300 pounds at the time of this video. And individual pencils cost around £3 per pencil, so it is quite expensive to buy them that way too. 
I started my collection by buying a few pencils at a time and then experimenting with new colours as I gradually discovered which shades I needed in my collection. Overall, I do really like the Luminance pencils and I found myself reaching for them a lot more recently. I mostly use them for base colours. They do make a really good creamy base. Moving on to my next favourite make of coloured pencil, the Pablo's, also by Karen Dash, are really similar in texture to the Polychromos, but according to Karen Dash, they are in fact a wax-based pencil, and this was a surprise to me because the leads are really firm and strong in comparison to, say, the Luminance pencils. I've only got a few shades in this range again, so I'm not an expert on them, but the only reason I haven't really purchased more is because I have got most of the colours that I need now in the Polychromos and the Luminance pencils. Some of my favourite colours from this range are Apricot, Brownish Beige and Brownish Orange. I'd like to experiment with the Pablos a bit more in future as they are really nice to work with and I would recommend trying them out if you're interested. A full set of 120 Caran d'Ache Pablo pencils will cost you an average of £250 at the time of this video. So again, they're not one of the cheapest pencils out there and individually they're about £2 per pencil. Overall, I do really like the Pablos. They're not my most reached for pencil and I think because I already have a full set of polychromos, I don't feel the need to buy a full set of Pablos because they are quite similar. Another great coloured pencil brand to consider is Derwent. So within their range you can find a variety of coloured pencils such as the Derwent Lightfast pencils and the Derwent Drawing pencils. I've only recently got a couple of Lightfast pencils myself and I have to say the colour payoff is amazing. I've not had a chance to use them that much yet though, but one pencil I do frequently reach for is the Derwent Drawing Black pencil. It's the blackest of blacks that I've found so far and it helps to make those really dark areas such as the pupils in the eyes stand out and look even darker. I think the main difference between the light fast pencils and the drawing pencils are what they're made of. So the light fast pencils are an oil based one and the drawing are a wax based. The Derwent light fast pencils are 100% light fast whereas the Derwent drawing pencils are described as highly light fast. Another main difference is the drawing pencils have more natural colours, whereas the light fast pencils have a much broader range of colours. You may have noticed the difference in price too. The light fast pencils are a little bit more expensive at £3.50 each, and the drawing pencils are a little bit cheaper at £2.35 each. So I'm not going to go into too much more detail, I've only scratched the surface on what Derwent have to offer as a coloured pencil brand, so it might be worth going and having a look at their other ranges if you're interested. The final coloured pencil that I'm going to talk about in this video is the Prismacolor coloured pencils, because I get asked about these quite a lot and they're what I actually started my coloured pencil journey with. They're another wax based pencil and they've got a really soft creamy texture but I'd say it almost feels a bit like a crayon. They give quite a waxy shiny look when applied to the paper and due to the creamy core they are very good for blending so they're often favoured by a lot of beginners. The full sets are a little bit cheaper than the other pencils in this video too. I think when I first started I only bought a pack of 72 and that's what I used for about three years. The main downside to these pencils is the leads can break quite easily, so just be careful if you do decide to go for the Prismacolor. I also find that here in the UK they're quite difficult to get hold of individually and can end up being really expensive, so for the price that you pay for them individually you might as well go for something higher quality such as a Polychromo. Overall, I think the sets can offer really good value to a beginner artist, but as soon as you need to start replacing them frequently, it's going to get expensive. So it depends how serious you are and if you want to get into professional work, whether you think they are worth the money. You can't create a coloured pencil drawing without a surface to work on. So we're now going to talk about drawing paper. The first thing to know about drawing paper is it comes in a variety of textures. Some paper has a slight grain to it while others are super smooth and the type that you choose will depend on personal preference and the types of drawings that you like to create. 
The Strathmore Bristol 300 series is very popular amongst realism artists and it's a good starting point for beginners. They offer both a smooth paper and a more textured paper called vellum. I personally prefer my paper to have a little bit of a grain to it so that the pencil can stick to it, which allows me to add more layers, which is an essential part of creating realistic drawings. Personally, I think the smooth would be more suited towards illustrations and rendered work. Overall, I think the Strathmore Bristol 300 series is a perfect starting point for beginners as it's relatively inexpensive and easy to get hold of and you can produce amazing work on it. Besides Strathmore, my favourite type of paper has always been hot press watercolour paper. It's 100% cotton and designed for use with watercolours but works amazingly with coloured pencils too. It has a slight grain to it but overall feels very smooth and allows for a lot of layers of coloured pencils. Different brands offer slightly different variations and up until now I'd only used the Fabriano Artistico hot press watercolour paper but sadly they changed the surface making it really rough and difficult to work with so I'm currently experimenting with different papers to find the one that I love. One thing to know about hot press watercolour paper is it comes in different weights which essentially means how thick the paper is. Thinner papers are typically cheaper, whereas thicker papers are more expensive, but they do tend to be a little sturdier. The weight of the paper will either be measured in GSM or pounds, so look out for that when you're shopping online. The higher the unit, the thicker the paper. The colour of the paper can also vary across different brands too. Some hot press watercolour papers have warmer undertones which look a bit more traditional whereas others can offer brighter white options which give more of a modern look. Besides the papers that I've already mentioned there are some other popular options too. A lot of artists like to use pastel matte paper which is a velvety sandpapery type of paper often used for pastels. The great thing about pastel matte is it comes in various colours so if you like a coloured background this might be for you. They offer greys, blues, oranges, white, all sorts of different colours so you can get really creative with your drawings. On the opposite end of the spectrum is drafting film which is another really popular surface for coloured pencils. It is a translucent polyester film which was originally designed for use with architectural drawings but it's becoming more popular with coloured pencil artists. It allows you to create really vibrant drawings relatively quickly so I can understand the appeal of it but I've never actually tried it myself so it might be something that I experiment with one day. Overall I think it's good to experiment with different drawing surfaces to see what you get on with best. I don't think it's a one size fits all and if you're struggling to get your drawings how you want them perhaps try changing up the surface and seeing if that makes a difference. Now moving on, you could have the best coloured pencils and paper in the world, but if you've got a rubbish pencil sharpener, you're really going to struggle to get the level of detail that you want. I used to always go for the cheapest pencil sharpener that I could find, and it wasn't until I switched to a better one that I actually saw a difference in the quality of my work. My favourite sharpener that I've tried that I use all the time is the Derwent Superpoint Manual Sharpener which is a helical sharpener and you turn the handle to move the spiral inside and it sharpens the pencil. It works really well for all of my coloured pencils apart from the Derwent ones which have the thicker casing. For those I use this handheld double metal pencil sharpener which I find is really good for what I need it for and to be fair if you're trying to save a bit of money you probably could use this for both the thinner and thicker pencils. For erasers I recommend getting yourself a putty eraser. They're mouldable and don't leave any of those annoying bits that fall off a normal eraser. This one's from Faber-Castell and I've had it for years now and I just roll it around in my hand to clean it and it's good to go. For smaller details and precise erasing I use this Tombow Mono Zero Eraser. It's a retractable eraser pen that's great for lifting tiny areas of colour pencil and I use it most for whiskers and light hairs and sometimes for lifting the highlights in the eyes. One thing to keep in mind with coloured pencils is that you can never fully remove anything that you put down, which is why it's best to work lightly and build up your layers slowly, which I'll go into more detail on later. 
but if used carefully, these erasers can be a useful tool in your drawings and for the times when you do make a mistake, they can help to correct them. Another of my favourite tools is the Slice Manual Pen Cutter, which is essentially a craft knife with a ceramic blade. Now this tool is great for scratching off the top layers of coloured pencil to reveal the lightest layer underneath. This means it's perfect for creating those light, wispy hairs as long as you've layered your coloured pencils correctly. Speaking of which, let's now move on to my tips and techniques for creating realistic coloured pencil drawings. I personally prefer a simple approach when it comes to coloured pencil drawings. I don't use any solvents or blending tools, but instead focus on layering. I mostly work from light to dark, slowly and gradually building up my layers until I create the level of depth and detail that I'm happy with. As you can imagine, this takes a long time, but that's one of the beautiful things about coloured pencils. It forces you to slow down and fully immerse yourself in the process. By applying lots of light, carefully considered layers, not only do you minimise the number of mistakes that you could make, but the work that you produce will be far richer and more refined. I like to start out with a base layer to smooth out the grain of the paper and I usually use a relatively firm pressure for this in order to get that nice smooth texture. For the next layers I apply a light pressure to start building up the colour going from one shade to the next gradually getting darker and then at the end if need be I apply a bit more pressure to get some more pigment and depth. Now, a lot of artists like to work with a technique called burnishing, which is where you start out with lots of light layers and then you smooth out the grain of the paper at the end with a lighter coloured pencil like a white. I find this technique alters the colours and dulls them down a little bit, so I only use it if I know that I want to change the colour of something. I also find it can be a little bit trickier to relayer back on top of a burnished area with another colour. So I prefer just to keep my burnishing to a minimum. My next tip is to familiarise yourself with your coloured pencils. So anytime I buy a new colour or a new set, I like to make a little swatch of each colour to see exactly what it looks like on the paper. Don't use the pencil casing as a reference, you want to see the true colour and this will help with choosing colours for your drawings. You can then hold these swatches up against your reference photo and see which are the closest colours to the section that you're drawing. This leads me nicely onto my next tip, which is just to keep experimenting. Keep practising, keep trying new things. You won't learn which colours work and which colours don't unless you just try loads of different combinations. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. If you're not making any, then you're probably not learning. Only through trial and error and making mistakes can we learn what to do differently next time. With that being said, my next tip is do not rush. Coloured pencils take a long time and we need to just respect that and not be tempted to rush the process. Some drawings take me hours if not days to complete, but once I've finished it's so much more satisfying and I feel really proud of what I've done. Whenever I've tried to rush through a drawing, I always end up hating it once it's finished. So don't make that mistake, just take it slow and enjoy the process. I hope this video has given you a good starting point and has helped you to feel less overwhelmed by the world of coloured pencils. If drawing animals is something that you're interested in, I do have some free tutorials here on YouTube that you can have a go at to see if you enjoy it. And just remember that practice is the key to getting better at anything in life. I strongly believe that anyone can become great at drawing in coloured pencils. You've just got to have that drive, passion and determination to keep going. I wish you all the best with your art journey. Remember to be easy on yourself, practice when you can and most importantly, have fun. Make sure to give this video a like if you enjoyed it because it really helps me out. Subscribe to see more content like this and I hope to see you soon in another video.